if you live in a colder climate, then, then winter is always just around the corner, right? <laughs> I know that's definitely the case for myself. I did a video on my channel about the, the winter care for goats, but I didn't touch on something that I think is really important that, that needs to be included into winter care topics. And that's the use of blankets for goats. Just a second, I have a goat. I didn't grow up with goats, but my family raised horses my entire life. I remember driving to a horse race in our rattly old blue pickup. It was so exciting because we rarely went anywhere. So this was like a huge adventure for me and my family. <laughs> and Boom Bang Lightning won his race and came home with a blanket. It was so exciting. Honestly, I don't remember if we had ever owned a blanket before that or after that, that one blanket. And, and we live in a really, a pretty cold state, Montana. Montana has its fair share of long, cold winters, but we never blanketed our horses. And I've never blanketed my goats either. There's a really important reason for that actually. Goats in their beautiful design were created to have a natural buffer against the cold. So if a goat is kept dry and out of the wind, they can handle a lot of cold. So they do need shelter. They do need hay, which will actually help keep them warm as well. And they really, really need unfrozen water to prevent dehydration as well. And tip for you here, they actually prefer warm water, so keep that in mind. And they need you to really keep a close eye on mites and lice breakouts as they are all just more confined in the winter months. They can have breakouts of lice and mites, so keep an eye out for that. But they do not need to be blanketed. And why is that? Well, they have a natural hair fluff. Pretty scientific right there. <laughs> but when their hair is fluffed up, it actually is providing them insulation that keeps them warm. In fact, research has shown that blankets will actually make animals cold. The blankets will, will actually trap the air inside, it will flatten the hair, which in the process will actually make them colder. So I've gone down the lane to our horses on multiple occasions and found our horses with snow on their backs, an actual layer of snow that hasn't melted. What does that mean? It means that their layer of fluffed up hair is doing a, its job and keeping them insulated enough to keep the snow from melting and the trapped air insulation keeps the heat from getting up to the snow to melt it and also keeps the snow's cold from reaching the body. Pretty cool, right? Most goats will grow a layer of cashmere as an undercoat that keeps their bodies warm. And, and you'll see your goat's hair all fluffed up on cold days and that fluff keeps the warm air trap just around their bodies. Isn't that brilliant? And a relief to know that they have a built-in blanket and you don't need to worry about putting blankets on them all winter. Isn't that awesome? Your goats will thank you for your attention to this fine and important detail. And so will your horses if you own them. While I was up the lane loving on the goats, Bill was down the lane loving on those horses. Hair is an important part of being a cowboy. These shoes will actually keep the horse's feet from being injured as Bill rides him throughout these next few months. I don't know.
know about you, but all of Bill's hard work has made me hungry. Let's go find some food. A more detailed post and video about making goat milk yogurt will be provided in the link below. Is it good? <laughs> Were you hungry? Yeah. You good? Mm -hmm. I really like we like our yogurt. yogurt. Mm -hmm. After I'm done drawing a whole picture, I'm really hungry. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Art. What was in it? Yogurt. Where did it go? <laughs> you ate it in record time. I've had quite a few of you email me or comment in my videos if I have um, any recipes that I can share using goat milk. And I believe that one of the very first things that you need to be doing with your milk besides drinking it is to be making yogurt. We absolutely love our goat milk yogurt. It is completely taken the place of anything we would buy at the store. And my kids love it, I love it, it is delicious. So I will show you how I, I make it because it is so simple and and you can do it too. Now you'll need to gather your supplies like a thermometer like this and heat your milk to 180 degrees. But there's sometimes that I just want a more raw yogurt. And so the, the more you heat yogurt, the more it is killing those wonderful, you know, good enzymes and things that are uh, in the milk. And so when you heat it to, uh, when it's just a raw milk, you'll heat it to about 118, 120, and you will have more of those just live probiotics and live things in it. Okay, so my thermometer has reached that temperature and now I'm going to turn off the temperature. I've removed this milk from the heat. I don't want it to keep heating up or, and I want it to really just cool as quickly as possible. And this is the hardest part for me. <laughs> How many times have I heated this up and then I, it's so, it feels like it takes forever for it to cool down and I go off and do something and then it's gotten way too cold or, and cooled off way too much and then I have to reheat it and it's a frustrating process. So for me, this is the most uh, frustrating part of this is waiting for it to cool down to about 105, 108 degrees. You want it to stay at that temperature then. That is the temperature that you'll put the, the culture in, the, in this milk, and, and you'll let it sit at that temperature for the remaining 12 or so hours. And so it's important to get it at that temperature. If it's too hot, it'll kill the cultures. And if it's too cold, it won't be incubating them enough to turn it into yogurt. So it's an important part of this to get it to the, the correct temperature. Okay, I have been diligent in watching the temperature. I have not let it get too cold. So proud of myself. <laughs> so I wanted to show you what culture I use. I use a culture from getculture.com and it is a mild flavor probiotic yogurt culture type ABY to C and I have found that this has a great taste it thickens really well and and is just an excellent option for us so that is one option that you can have and, and use for your yogurt but you can also go to the grocery store and pick up just a a, a yogurt that is a plain yogurt. Make sure that it has on there live cultures, live probiotics, um, because that's what's needed to then culture the, the yogurt. So you can also use that as well and, and put that in the yogurt and mix it up and, and culture it that way. But I found that I get really consistent results with using this. It lasts quite a while. And it shows on here how much to use. It says eighth of a teaspoon for up to half a gallon milk or a fourth of a teaspoon for one to four gallons. And I use probably a, a heaping tea, for a gallon, a heaping tea, a fourth of a teaspoonful to do this. So I scoop her in here. Right now the temperature is at 109.6. And I'm going to just sprinkle this on the top here and let it sit for uh, a couple minutes to kind of, because it's a dry culture. And so I'm going to let it just kind of soak up and, and reform itself for whatever it does. Okay, so I'm putting this back in here. 
I'm going to mix it very gently, mix in that culture as much as possible. I want it to get to all corners of this and so I'm mixing it in really well, gently bringing the milk up from the bottom and mixing it, mixing it down. All right, now that the culture is mixed in, I just put on the lid. And I will click it on yogurt and put it to the eight hours here. And uh, I will leave it between eight and 12 hours and then put it in the fridge. It is so much better than, than, than the store-bought just because it is, you know where the milk came from. You, it, it's not been a lot of preservatives put into it and a lot of sugars put into it. And, and so you have control of that from start to finish with your yogurt. And that is what makes it so healthy and so good for you. This is what the yogurt looks like when it's done and ready to be put in the fridge. It's time to go out and do chores. I'm gonna be feeding all the animals tonight. Bill is at the sale barn. So I am going to be uh, getting, getting on my boots, my old coat so I can go feed the goats, the pigs, and the horses down the lane. So let's go see how they're all doing. Girls are dietty. How are you, bud? Yes. It's a boy, huh? Look at all that. You need some loving, don't ya? Yeah, you do. You need somebody to love on you and brush you. Yeah. It's a boy. Starving, aren't you, Cosmo? Are you starving? Yes. You're starving, huh? It's pretty bad, isn't it? Yes. Low, low mess. How's my low mess? How are you? How are you guys? Good to see you. And how about beauty? Beauty here, she is um, one of our mares that we raised and she is actually the full sister to Smokey over here and I'm going to start riding her so I'm excited about that. It's time, I finally need to make time to start riding again. And you're it Beauty, are you ready for that? So these two here are the ones that we took on the wagon train, you can see that video on my channel about that. And Duke. Hello, Duke. You were I rode on the wagon train, huh? Good to see you. This is Bill's newest prospect here. He's gonna start training him. And Cinnamon. Hi, Cinnamon. Good to see you. Good to see you, Cinnamon. Hey, guys. Hi, handsome. All right, I'll feed you. Just hold your horses. We just had this last week negative nine. Uh, Fahrenheit and now this next week it's going to be in the 50s. It's going to be a sloppy mess. It's going to be so wet and muddy. Ugh. If you actually made it to the end of my last video, you would have seen my goats licking the snow. <laughs> yeah, our well water isn't, isn't the best and it's just hard now that 
that that's what they have is the well water. So I've been putting snow, this fresh snow, into <laughs> their water and then it melts and they drink that and they really like it. This hard, snow is hard though. It's very, it's like snowman snow. So I have a heater in there. The heater's in there and it melts this snow. What are you guys waiting for? Huh? What are you guys waiting for? Huh? Look at all those cute faces. Okay, I'll feed you. We've reached the end of another beautiful day and have so much to be thankful for. We're surrounded by our animals and the beauty of God's creation, and we have our family and love. What more could we ask for? Even staring down the snouts of these guys makes me chuckle and grin and count my blessings. Have a great week, guys. See you next time.